Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we're delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We want to hear from you, so you can send us an email with your question or your comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, we had a wonderful show with a guest, Father Lawrence Carney, and boy, oh boy, did he steal my heart. Oh, he's very, very special. Walking the street to God, he speaks of. And his calling, he says, is to walk the streets, walk the countryside, as Jesus did, and that he wants to snatch souls from Satan and lead people to the altar of God. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. You know, just to move in the power of the kingdom. So he just walks the streets where he is, in his cassock, in his Saturno yes. that he has, carrying a large crucifix, carrying the rosary beads. And so when people honk their horn to see him, instead of just waving with his hand, he lifts up the crucifix of Christ. And people are drawn to him. Mm -hmm. People are coming to him from all over, just wanting to, to speak with him. And there's something about the cassock. Yes. And it really is a sacramental and his simplicity and the way he's dressed. And, and uh, people are just opening up their hearts and sharing their hearts with Father Carney. What an inspiration he is. Well, when he was here, he just shared about some of the beautiful encounters that he had. And he really feels like it's time in the church mm. that priests take to the streets and sit and be with the people of the world, those who are lost. Maybe they're not ready to come into the church, right? right? And so he's like, well, then I'll go to them. And he sits on benches and he meets with people. He goes into coffee shops and he encounters them face to face. And it's so beautiful it's what Pope he Francis does. Pope Francis who says that the shepherds need to smell like the sheep. And he's saying, we need shepherds at this time that are going out after the lost sheep and to come out towards them. And if we would just walk out there in love, that they, they, will, they will come, and then hopefully they'll be brought to the altar of God. He works with a group of nuns, uh, Benedictine nuns. He's their chaplain, yes. and he's steeped in the Holy Eucharist and deep spirituality. They're praying for him, and hopefully for a whole religious order that will be raised up. That's his heart, that's, mm -hmm. that's his vision. But he really sees himself as an evangelistic monk. Yes. I mean, what a combination. Because he says, you have to be filled with the Lord in intimacy with him because that's what you're going to share when you walk the streets and the sheep come to you. If you don't have anything in here to share, mm. you won't have anything to give. Right. And he gives the best thing that he has, which is his intimate relationship with Jesus. And those that are lost and lonely, they need him. And so just keep praying for Father Lawrence Carney. Let's go. Let's watch. You're going to be impacted just looking at Father Carney. You're going to be inspired. And uh, hopefully we, like him, will go out and take the streets as well and share Jesus and call people to the altar of God. We'll be right back. I was rather just um, exuding in excitement and gushing with beautiful things to say about Father Lawrence Carney. And when you hear from him, you'll say, she was right. He is an author, and he's authored a book called Walking the Road to God. But that's what he's doing with his life. You can send him an email, fathercarney at gmail.com. You can go to his website, walkingtheroadtogod.com. Well, I want to welcome you, Father, to At Home with Jim and Joy. And it is just a sheer pleasure and delight yes. to have you. When we were researching you and doing our studies on you, we were falling in love with you. And, um, and it was just easy to do because you shine. And um, we know that a lot of people are praying for you, and it's by no accident that you shine. But we want you to tell our family at home Father Lawrence's Carney's story. Oh, absolutely. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate you asking me to come. And I'm Father Lawrence Carney. I was born in Wichita, Kansas, and I have loving parents, uh, Kathy and Larry. And my mom's Italian, my dad's Irish. And I grew up in a uh, Catholic parish called St. Joseph. And we 
had a very unusual situation because we had a religious order, the Redemptress. We had about three or four other religious that were assisting at the grade school. So I saw a lot of different habits. So I was really struck by that. And the way that I became a priest, I think, is this an amazing story that came from the Blessed Virgin Mary and our Lord Jesus. Because when I was six years old, I was in kindergarten, and this Redemptor's priest came and gave each of the students a holy card of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. And he said, students, hold the card out and move her image back and forth like this and watch her eyes. She's always looking for you if you need help. And look mm. at Jesus. Mm. He ran into her arms. And there's a sandal dangling on a lot of these. And there were two angels carrying the implements of his torture. And when I saw that card in front of me, I saw real eyes and I thought, wow, if a priest can do that, I want to be a priest. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then about 19 years later, when I was 25, my mother, Kathy, took me into that kindergarten room and it had shrunk in size. Well, no, really, it didn't. You grew. I You're grew. so tall. <laughs> I was 25 and I ran away from the vocation to be a priest, but God was doing amazing things to me. And when I went into that room, I remember where that priest's face was. Well, it had been converted to an adoration chapel, and our Lord was exposed in the Holy Sacrament of the altar right there. Mm. And that was one of the many two-by-fours to, required to hit me over the head to say, go to the seminary. Mm. Mm. So, so now beautiful. I'm here. All from the application of what we might think really didn't mean anything. First, a priest gave you a prayer card, gave you a holy card, and then he asked you, right? The problem is we're not asking children. We're not asking boys. We're not asking little young girls. And so then you go back and, and you say, yes, there it is. And so mm -hmm. you went off to seminary. Where'd you go to seminary? I went to Mount St. Mary Seminary in Emmitsburg, mm -hmm. Maryland. And I graduated there in 2007. And I celebrated my 10-year anniversary to the priesthood May the 26th of this year, the Feast of St. Philip Neri. So at, that's the date that I had the book published, so I'd always remember that, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. walking the road to God. Yeah. So you were ordained for a diocese? Yes. In Wichita? Wichita, Kansas. Okay. Yeah. So your diocese, is that Kansas City, Kansas, or Missouri, or it's both of those, or what? Wichita, what? Kansas is South Central Kansas area. And I was a diocesan, I'm still a diocesan priest attached there. I'm incarnated okay. there. And I was a, a priest serving in the diocese for about six years. And then I asked my bishop if I could go and become part of a community. And years prior to becoming a seminarian, the vocations director, Father Matt McGinnis, asked me to become a priest. And I said, I think I'm really called to be a religious. Mm -hmm. And he said, give it a try as a diocesan priest. And if you are called by God, you'll know, and that's a, a higher calling. So you would probably be free to do that. So I was faithful to becoming a priest in Wichita and serving as a pastor for four years. And then that thought of being a religious just never went away. Mm -hmm. So my good bishop and I had some talks and he gave me permission to go and explore that. Okay. So how did you do that? Where did you go? Well, I went to Europe with a backpack and I also went through the Midwest here in the United States. And in Europe, I walked a trail called Santiago de Compostela, which is the way of St. James. Mm -hmm. St. James, when he was taking after his martyrdom from Jerusalem, the Spanish people loved him, so they buried him in Santiago. And there were stars coming out of his grave. Well, my friend told me, you need to go and walk so that you can discover what God wants you to do. So I'll never forget, it was a 32-day journey, and we only stayed in a hostel on Sunday nights to rest, but we would, we would camp out in the forest, and I got to thinking, sleeping under the stars, I wonder if this is how Jesus trained his apostles. Mm -hmm. So along the way, I would wear this cassock and this Saturno hat, and Saturno, Saturno, Saturn? Yes, it's a okay. short word for Saturn, or Capilla Romano, an Italian hat. 
and it's really good for the sun in Spain. And anyways, about a thousand people would ask to take our picture or to talk to us, and I started to think, this is really neat. People are asking things about God and about what I do, and it was just an, it's like an icebreaker. So I discerned um, to join the Benedictines of Mary. They asked me to be their chaplain. And I asked if I could walk the streets of St. Joe to bring this idea of how people just come and talk to me just by simply praying and presenting myself as a priest. And so after a couple months of walking the streets of St. Joseph, Missouri, I just noticed how it was working. People were coming and talking to me. And I, I just asked God, if you want to do something with this, I would love to write a book, but I'm not going to do that because Father Carney, the old Father Carney, if he does things his way, mm -hmm. it never works. So I put it in God's hands. And then that's where Miss Sherry, Mrs. Sherry Boas approached me of Caritas Press to write a book. And when we talk, I said, what do I write about? And she says, just write about the stories. And people love stories. And I love to tell stories. Yeah. Why, why the title, Walking the Road to God? Walking the Road to God. Well, we're all pilgrims. We come into this world with nothing, and we will leave with nothing. But there's that philosophical three questions. Where do we come from? Right. Why are we here? Where are we going? And when we slow down our pace, unplug from our phones and from social media, sometimes when we slow down and walk and in nature, then God starts to reveal to us how we're going to be happy in this life and in the next. So that's why the title is Walking the Road to God. It's better to walk the road to God than to any other place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Father, tell our family at home what you take, right? So you're in your cassock, you have on your saturno, right? Mm -hmm. And you come with a cross, your rosary beads. Yes. And what does a typical day look like for Father Lawrence? Well, a typical day is I, I pray the divine office, matins and lauds, which are the Psalms and some readings. And I attend a mass at a local parish, Father Harkins and Father Soares at St. James Parish in St. Joe, Missouri. And then I go and hear confessions for the Benedictines of Mary Queen of the Apostles, and then I say Mass for them. And then after they feed me with a very good and wholesome meal, I'm ready to go hit the streets. So then in the afternoon, I start walking around, and I just pray the rosary. And I carry this crucifix, which is an old Passionist crucifix. Mm. And when people smile or wave or honk, or sometimes even if they don't, I'll give them a blessing. And when I first started, I had a cross different than this in my little sash here. And I started to read a book called The True Devotion by St. Louis de Montfort. And I was at a stop sign, a stoplight, excuse me. And it said, the apostles in the latter times will carry a crucifix in their right hand and a rosary in their left. So I put the book back into my backpack and thought, wow, let's try this. So when I pulled this out and people honked, instead of waving hello, I would hold up the cross. Mm -hmm. And then that developed into giving a blessing. There's a book called Insigne Yezu, which is St. John uh, laying on the breast of Jesus at the Last Supper, on the heart of Jesus, in the bosom of Christ. And the author of this book talks about how important a priestly blessing is. Mm. And it was revealed to this priest that we should give out our blessing liberally as priests because it has such a great effect. It's simply the Trinity using us priests as instruments to give his blessing to people. Mm -hmm. so. I, I was not familiar with that verse from St. Louis de Mumford um, that the apostles in the latter time, and where did he get that from? I mean, latter time, that they would carry a, cro a cross crucifix in the right hand rosary beads mm -hmm. in the left hand. I, I'm sure you've read him in numerous times, but this really struck you, and you said, let me try it, right? Yeah. Yes. I just thought, well, 
uh, I want to become a saint. So if he's saying that someone's going to do this later on, why can't I try it? Someone's got to try this. Why not now? Because yes. maybe now, maybe later on. That's true. So right? You haven't heard of other priests speaking that verse or kind of walking the way. There's no religious or congregational group or association of priests that are really taking that up. There might be some that do be. that. Yeah. Although I've not seen it or heard it. And when I read it, I thought, well, this is definitely for me. And St. Louis de Montfort also predicts that these apostles, at, at these saints in the latter time, will carry a bloody standard. And I wondered what that was. And I started to read a book called The Golden Arrow by Sister uh, Mary of St. Pierre. And in 1847, she began to receive revelations from the, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ about a certain prayer that would wound the heart of God. And Saint Martin of Tours, who is the, the bishop, saint, priest, who I'm going to name the order after, spoke to her and encouraged her to come to Tours and to present this uh, devotion to the Holy Face. Mm. And the Holy Face is definitely a bloody standard. So I have some friends that are now making a standard of the Holy Face, and I plan to carry that around, too. You say you'd like to have an association of some kind. You'd like um, more men to come forth and, and walk with you, and, and I believe that it's already in the hearts of many. Please share with us about what you think the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in this area. Sure. Yes, um, I would like to provide a path of holiness for young men and I've been working with a cardinal and a few bishops about this becoming the Canons Regular of St. Martin of Tours, which would be a group that would live under the, um, the life of St. Augustine, his rule of life. And we would be basically Canons Regular at home. So Canons Regular in between the spectrum of totally contemplative monks and totally active diocesan priests. So we would have a life that's a little bit contemplative, a little bit active. So we would nickname be monks in the city <laughs> and then apostles abroad. So uh, basically, uh, I would like to encourage young men that would like to come and walk with me ever uh, to come and check it out. But my hope is someday that we would actually start an official uh, religious community that would be very concerned about having contemplation with God, you know, just deep union with Him, yes. and then to share that union in the streets of the cities of the United States, because not everyone in every city of the United States is Catholic, and to be Catholic means to come to the holy altar of God to receive His body mm -hmm. and blood. Mm -hmm. So we would like to do Gregorian chant, we would like to do processions throughout the streets, we would like to be trailblazers, not like the Portland basketball team, but <laughs> we, would, we would like to trailblaze new paths for people to become pilgrims, like the one in Spain, mm -hmm. the Camino in Spain. So. It was Beautiful. interesting when uh, you, we send information out to the guests we're going to have, and we ask them, you know, what do you hope to convey, or what are you about, or what it is about? And I want to read something that you, you wrote. You said, hoping to walk the earth as Jesus did through the countryside and the cities, snatching souls from the devil Hallelujah. and bringing them to the altar of God. I just said, well, not many guests have said that. <laughs> you know, said, this is going to be interesting, let me tell you that. Um, so speak, I mean, that, that's in your heart. I mean, it's a burn in your heart to do that. And you believe others, God's already placed this in their heart. And you know, this isn't very novel and new. I heard you say anything really all that creative. Because yeah. it's like, this has been done before, before, but it's been lost. And you're just saying, this is dry. This is tested. This yes. is true. Yes, the motto for this new association would be Theron Sacra in Mundum, which means bringing the sacred into the world. So the example is the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is a Theotokos, a God-bearer. I think St. Paul gives us a good indication, which he says, hold fast to the traditions. And 
I have found that some of the old things that we Catholics used to do, they're coming back and the youth love them. Mm. They are treasures that bring us. It's, it's the incense, it's the procession, it's the chant, it's our mother tongue, mm -hmm. Latin. And I have found that when young people are introduced to this for the first time, it, it's just, it, it's so beautiful, it pierces to their heart and it ravishes them, and it stops them in their tracks from going away from God, and it brings them to Him. That's my experience. And when I find people in the streets and they say, where do you go? I bring them to those treasures, to the nuns, or mm -hmm. to a sung mass, mm -hmm. a sung high mass. And I've had people after mass on the spot tell me, Father, I want to join this parish. You know, mm -hmm. some that have fallen away mm -hmm. for many years. Mm -hmm. So I think Drawing people back to our traditions, our Catholic traditions, is not something that is repulsive, but it actually draws them. It's a bridge. Because humans aren't just souls, we're bodies. Mm -hmm. And these, having these five senses uh, gratified with beautiful things that are of our Catholic Church's tradition and her deposit, I think are a way that's not a novelty, but it's something that's bringing back the traditions. Mm -hmm. So bringing the sacred in the world, I want to go out there to show people, you know, what missionaries, you know, we used to have so many missionary priests, we don't have enough priests right now. Mm. But I think that if priests can go out like this, it will encourage other young men to become priests mm -hmm. and other young women to become religious and, and other men to become religious too. Mm -hmm. So, well, Father, we are so incredibly blessed uh, to be with you, to interview you. And I must say, as we were doing this interview, I said, I'm glad nobody else got to do this interview but us. But I <laughs> must say that I would wish that Mother Angelica was interviewing you. You would be such a source of joy for her soul and really one of her children that have come forth to continue that legacy and message throughout our country and throughout the world. May Almighty God bless you with every good thing, bring every good thing to pass that we might have more like you, contemplatives out in the world, contemplar gents, as I said, Mother mm -hmm. Angelica was, a contemplative who's urgent to snatch souls from Satan and to bring a renewal to the church and to bring people back home to the altars of God. Would you give us a blessing, Father? Absolutely. Benedictio de omnipotentis, patris et fidi, spiritus sanctus, shindit, supervosit, mani et semper. Amen. Amen. Well, you've heard today from Father Lawrence Carney. He's the author of Walking the Road to God. His uh, website that you can go to is Father Carney, F R C A R N E Y, at gmail.com. The book is Walking the Road to God. Dot com, and as I was saying to, to Father, that nothing novel here at all. He's stolen everything <laughs> from Jesus and from the apostles and disciples. Nothing new here. Um, but God is renewing this in our own day and in our own time. Joy, what, what are you taking away from this well, time? Well, it's a privilege. You know, there are times when we get to be the host and we get to meet holy men and women of God, and you mm -hmm. are one of them. Thank you. And just delighted. My heart is is so excited that yes you said yes and you're out on the street and I'm sure people come up to you and they say father I need to make a confession mm -hmm. and you're the gateway yeah. to hear the yeah. confession to say now go home go to the church Amen. let's pause right at this point a very special at home with Jim and Joy with father Lawrence Carney author of walking the road to God father Carney at gmail.com walking the road to God.com and just sharing about how the Lord has led him to walk the streets of our country and countryside and to be a visible manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ and the great things that take place when he does. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, I know that you enjoyed that wonderful show with Father Lawrence because he certainly is doing an effective job of taking his beautiful message to the streets. Now, be sure to join us on Monday when we will have Deacon Bill Williams on the show. He's a deacon, he's a doctor, and he's going to share his concerns about the effect of hormonal contraceptives on women's health. You don't want to miss that show. Well, keep it on EWTN. Remember, you're always at home with Jim and Joy. God bless you.